So how are your exams? Yes, how are your exams? Okay, so we are sitting after a very long gap. So we have completed alcohols, uh, phenols, and ethers. Okay, I had finished the synopsis part. So the remaining uh, part I have just recorded. So sir will be directly uh, adding that. Okay, uh, so you will get those uh, recorded videos of the remaining chapter of alcohol, phenols, and ethers okay so today i am going to start with a new topic so today we are going to start with a new topic that is aldehyde ketones and carboxylic acid okay so this topic we are going to start so in organic chem chemistry now okay till now you have studied many organic compounds right so you have studied first about haloalkenes right so what it is it is halogen containing groups right so the uh hydrogen okay hydrogen atoms were replaced by a halide group halogen atom so halo alkanes then we have seen about halo arenes what are halo arenes in a aromatic system okay uh so in an aromatic system one of the hydrogen atom is replaced by a halogen atom okay so this gives to halo arenes so we have studied about halo alkanes halo arenes then we have studied about what we have studied about uh, alcohols okay so alcohol which is the functional group oh group right alcohols then phenols is also oh group but here it is attached to a aromatic ring okay then uh, next we have discussed about ethers r o r dash okay so that is ethers so esters then aldehyde ketones okay carboxylic acid so these are all what these are all organic uh what you can say so these are different organic compounds okay so which are containing different functional groups so in this chapter we are going to study particularly the organic compounds which are containing c double bond o group okay so we are going to study particularly what we are going to study particularly the organic compounds okay which are having c double bond o okay what is c double bond o c double bond o is called as the carbonyl carbon okay c double bond o is called as what it is called as the carbonyl group so in this chapter we are going to study what we are going to study about the carbonyl groups okay so what all we are going to study we are going to study about aldehyde so aldehyde also contains carbonyl group then ketones ketones also contain carbonyl group and carboxylic acid now what are the structures okay aldehyde aldehyde is represented by r c h o how is aldehyde represented? Aldehyde is represented by RCHO. Okay. Then how is a ketone represented? Ketone is represented by R C double bond O R dash. Okay. So like this is your ketone represented. Okay. Now carboxylic acid R C O O H. So this is your carboxylic acid. So more easy way I'll just write it like this. Okay, uh, you want to see the double bond, right? So, C double bond o, o H. So, this is carboxylic acid. This is your ketone. Okay, and this is your aldehyde. Fine. So, these are the functional groups. So, these are the different functional groups. Okay. So, which we are going to study. So, now we will study uh, in detail about this. Okay, so how are okay? So we'll start with the nomenclature and structure of carbonyl 
group. Okay. So carbonyl groups are what? Carbonyl groups are the organic compounds which are containing what? Which are containing C double bond. It contains what? C double bond O group, right? So what are uh, carbonyl compounds? So carbonyl compounds. Right. So carbonyl compounds are what? They are the organic compounds which are containing carbon oxygen double bond. Okay. So between the carbon and oxygen, there is what? There is a double bond. You can see here, right? So the structure you can see here. So it is having a carbon oxygen double bond. Okay. So organic compounds, they, uh, they contain the uh, carbonyl group. Okay. Or carbonyl compound. Okay. Which is made up of CO bond co double bond okay so this is about your carbonyl compound next aldehyde the carbonyl group is attached to hydrogen atom and one carbon of an uh, carbon okay so in aldehyde the carbonyl group okay the uh, aldehyde in aldehyde what happens the carbonyl group it is attached to one hydrogen okay it is attached to one hydrogen atom and one carbon atom of an alkyl or aryl group so how it will be r c okay h o so this is your aldehydic group so one is your either a carbon atom or any alkyl or aryl group. So, alkyl or aryl group. And this is what? Uh, so, I'll write it more easy way. How it will be? So, R, C, double bond O, H. Like this. So, one is your hydrogen atom. Yes, you can see here. One is your hydrogen atom. One is your hydrogen atom. And the uh, other is your carbon atom. Okay. So, this carbon atom can be your any alkyl group or a aryl group okay so this is about the uh what uh in aldehyde so this is a structure of aldehydes next we are going to study about the ketones okay so in ketones how it is r c double bond o r dash okay so the carbonyl group so carbonyl group is what it is the c double bond o okay so carbon oxygen double bond so here the carbonyl group it is attached to two carbon atoms so this is two carbon atoms okay of a uh, different alkyl or a aryl group so r and r dash okay so these are this can be your alkyl or a aryl group so here both are the carbon atoms okay it is attached to two carbon atoms so this gives rise to the structure of ketones next is uh Carboxylic acid. Next is what? Carboxylic acid. So, carboxylic acid, the carbonyl group. So, carbonyl group is C double bond O group. So, it is attached to one carbon atom of an alkyl or aryl group. So, R can be your any alkyl or aryl group. And the, okay, and, and, and an oxygen atom of an hydroxyl group. Okay. So, this is the structure of carboxylic acid. So, carbon is attached to what carbonyl group is attached to one alkyl or aryl group and another oxygen atom of an hydroxyl moiety. Okay, so this is the structures of our aldehyde, ketones and carboxylic acid. So here you can see this is aldehyde. Okay, one is hydrogen, another is a alkyl or aryl group. Next is ketone. A carbonyl group is attached to both the carbon atoms Okay, of an alkyl or aryl group. Then here is a carboxylic acid. Carbonyl group is attached to one carbon atom and another oxygen atom of an hydroxyl moiety. Okay. So this is about the structure of carbonyl group. So this is about the structure of carbonyl group. So now we are going to study in detail about this carbonyl structures. Okay, so next is structure of 
So next is structure of carbonyl group of aldehyde and ketone. So the carbonyl group which is present in aldehyde and ketone. So we are going to study the structure of that. Okay. So here is the structure. What is given here at the below. Okay. So the carbonyl carbon atom is sp2 hybridized. Okay. So this is the structure given. So carbonyl compound it was C O. Okay. So one is they have taken of ketone. So R and another this is in plane. This is out of plane. Okay. Near to the observer and far from the observer. We know this how to write. So this is the. Okay. So the carbonyl carbon this atom. It is sp2 hybridized. Okay. It is sp2 hybridized. Why it is sp2 hybridized? Because it is having a double bond. So whenever you have a double bond system, it is sp2 hybridized. So this carbon is what? It is sp2 hybridized. So it is bonded to three other carbon atoms. Okay. It is bonded to. It is bonded to three other atoms. Three sigma bonds. Okay. It is bonded to. Three other atoms through three sigma bonds. The four valence electrons. Just a second. So, so your, uh, so the carbon, okay, the center carbon, which is sp2 hybridized, okay, so it is bonded to three other carbon atoms, okay, through three sigma bonds. So here you can see that it is bonded to three other carbon atoms, which is of three sigma bonds. So first, okay, so R, here you can see one sigma bond, two sigma bond, and this is the third sigma bond. So uh, firstly, it is bonded with three sigma bonds. So this is one is sigma bond, right? One sigma bond, this is one sigma bond, this is one sigma bond. The fourth valence electron of the carbonyl carbon, the fourth valence electron of the carbonyl carbon, okay, it remains in the p orbital. So one electron is uh, left unpaired, okay? So that un uh, valence electron, what will happen to one, one valence electron? It will get... Okay, so this, uh, the fourth valence electron of the carbonyl carbon, which remains in the p orbital, okay, it is unhybridized, right? As it is uh, valence, okay, that is, it is unpaired or it is, uh, okay, so this unhybridized p orbital, it gets overlapped with the p orbital of the oxygen. So from oxygen also, one electron is left unpaired. So this electron from the carbon and this electron from the oxygen, it get overlaps and it forms a pi bond. So the next bond is formed, that is a pi bond is formed in that. Okay. So the angle, so this makes the bond angles of the carbonyl carbon and the three other atoms to which it is attached are 120 degree. So the angle made by this is what the angle made by it, it is uh, 120 degree. Okay. The angle is 120 degree degree angle so you can see here the angle made by the carbonyl carbon and the three other atoms okay it is approximately 120 degree the structure is therefore trigonal planar so you can see here okay what i have drawn here the structure it is trigonal planar right so it is in the form of triangle you can see here the structure is like in the form of triangle so so you can see this is a structure of the triangle so one Two and this is the third corner. So like this. So triangular planar, coplanar structure. So the structure which is formed, it is called as what? Triangular coplanar structure. I hope this is clear. So this is the structure of aldehydes and ketones. Okay. Then uh, nextly. So here uh, they have given both. Okay. Now if you take this both, uh, you know now what is the difference between aldehyde and a ketone? Okay, aldehyde is what C double bond O H and ketone is what R C double bond O R dash, right? So here they have given both for R. So this is for ketone. Okay, now if you want to explain it for hide, uh, that is aldehyde, what you have to do? The structure, everything remains the same. Only here comes your hydrogen. Okay, so the structure of carbonyl group of 
aldehyde and ketone is explained in such a manner. Okay, I hope this is clear. No, so next is we are going to study about the nomenclature, how to name the aldehydes. So the common names of aldehydes are derived from the names of the corresponding carboxylic acids by replacing eek add by aldehyde. Okay, so the common names of aldehydes are derived from their names. Oh, okay, so they are derived from the names. The IUPAC names of aldehyde will follow a usual pattern. The longest chain which is carrying the CHO group is considered. So always whenever you have a longest chain which is containing the CHO group is considered as the parent structure. And uh, what you are going to do now aldehyde. Okay, so aldehyde. Suppose aldehyde. So this E, the last E should be replaced by AL. Okay. So means what? Meth uh, methane. Okay. If I get methane as a structure. Okay. So what is happening? Methanol. Okay. It will be methanol. Okay. AL. E will be, e will be replaced by AL. Okay. Okay. So here, what will happen? So here your E, so E will be replaced by AL. Okay, so it is methanol. The position of a substituent is indicated by a number. So here the position, so always a position of the substituents. What are the substituents? Substituents means what? Methyl groups, ethyl group, okay, a propyl group, benzyl group, phenyl group. So these are the substituents. So whenever you have a substituent, so they should be indicated by a number. The carbonyl carbon will always be considered as the C1. So always the carbon which is having the functional group. Suppose if it is having a uh, carbonyl group, so that will be considered as 1. Okay, it will get the... Okay, so here what will happen? So here, uh, so the carbonyl... So the, uh, the position, okay. So what will happen to the position? So the position of the substituents will be indicated by the number. So the the carbonyl carbon will always be uh, being uh, considered as C1. So they will be considered always as C1, okay. So here are some of the names. So whenever you have a, a carbonyl group, so that carbonyl group will be considered as what? They will be considered as the you have to name it as one. So here you can see the first one is methane. Okay. CH double bond O. So that is the name is formaldehyde. The aldehyde name is formaldehyde. Next is ethanol. Okay. So ethanol, two carbons are there. So it is ethanol. It is the name is acetaldehyde. Then uh, propanol. Okay. Name is propanaldehyde. Then uh, N butaldehyde. Okay. Because there are four carbon atoms. It is butanol. Then benzaldehyde. Okay, there is a benzene group. So, it is called as what? Benzaldehyde. Okay, next is what? Uh, benzaldehyde. Next is p nitro benzaldehyde because there is a nitro group attached to the benzene ring. Here it is toluene. Okay, p toluene because you have a CHC group attached to a benzene ring. Whenever you have this structure, last uh, in the Alcohol, phenols and ethers, we have seen how to synthesize salicyldehyde. It is called as orthohydroxybenzaldehyde. Next is phenylacetaldehyde because there is a phenyl ring okay, with the acetaldehyde group. Next, so these are some of the aliphatic chains. 2-methyl pentanol. Okay, so 1. So here, so always the carbonyl group will, uh, will get the first number. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So at 2 position... Uh, at uh, two position, you have your methyl group. At two position, you have your methyl group. So, what will be the name? It will be 2-methyl, okay, pentanol because there are five carbons. So, pent and pent E. So, E, N, E, E will be replaced by R. Okay, so it is 2-methyl pentanol. Next, here you can see, though this will get the list 1, 2 and 3. So, the 4 and 5. So, this will be uh, 3 methyl 5. So, pentanol. Okay. Again, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 4 methyl 
pentanol so these are the way you can name your compounds i hope this is clear so nomenclature is very important okay when questions are asked uh, so based on nomenclature also questions are asked next is nomenclature of ketones how to name the ketone compounds so according to iupac system the longest chain which is carrying the carbonyl group e is uh, considered as the parent chain always so the carbonyl group which is uh, having okay so the parent chain which is having the carbonyl compound okay so that will be considered as a you are going to consider it as a parent chain and uh, okay so the e e will be replaced by own okay e will be replaced by own in case of your ketone okay and in case of aldehyde e will be replaced by al okay so this is the way you have to name it the positions of various groups are indicated by numbers so the position of the various groups is uh, is, uh, is uh, indicated by the numbers the carbonyl carbon okay being the given the smallest so uh, the carbonyl carbon will give, will be given the lowest possible number now here 1 2 3 so it is acetone or it is propanone okay because three carbons are there so propane okay e is replaced by on so propanone your 1 1 2 3 and 4 so it is what methyl so this is methyl ethyl ketone or buto butanone okay because four carbon atoms then your 1 2 3 4 5 so it is what uh, so it is 2 pentanone okay then your 1 2 3 4 5 so it is 3 pentanone 1 2 3 4 so it is 3 methyl 2 butanone okay then 1 2 3 so no so phenyl okay between this and this phenyl will be having the least number so phenyl should be given the first number so 1 2 and 3 so 1 phenyl 2 propanol okay then here 1 2 and 3 so it is called as acetophenol so aceto this is a aceto group acetophenol okay then this is n butyrophenone this is benzophen because benzophenone because there are two uh, benzene ring attached to the carbonyl group and this is the 3 nitro 4 methyl benzophenone okay so these are some of the how to name the uh, ketones okay next we are going to study with the preparations okay next we are going to study with the preparations so first we are going to start with the preparation of aldehyde okay how to prepare the aldehydes hmm so first is oxidation of primary alcohols what is primary alcohol when the oh group is attached to directly to only one carbon okay then it is called as primary carbon so here r ch2 oh which is the primary alcohol when you are treating with potassium dichromate okay that is k2cr2 o7 which is a strong oxidizing agent it is converted into okay r ch2 oh is converted when you are doing oxidation into r cho okay so what is happening here you can see the number of hydrogen atoms from the reactant the product is decreased so there is removal of hydrogen okay removal of hydrogen so is what it is a uh, oxidation reaction so primarily so primarily what we are doing we are taken a, a alcoholic group okay that is primary alcoholic group what we are going to do we are going to do strong uh, it, we are going to treat it with oxidizing agent we are going to treat it with oxidizing agent so when you treat with oxidizing agent like potassium dichromate it is converted to aldehyde it is converted to what it is converted to aldehyde so this is the reaction so we'll see one example uh, so this is what 1 2 3 4 so 1 2 3 4 so it is butanol okay one butanol so one butanol when it is treated with potassium dichromate plus acid that is h2so4 and when you warm the solution you get what you got butanol you get what butanol so your uh, your alcohol primary alcohol is converted into aldehyde so this is a uh, potassium dichromate potassium dichromate is a strong oxidizing agent okay potassium dichromate is a strong oxidizing agent
so this was the first method of preparation next we are going to see the oxidation of methyl benzenes okay next we are going to see the oxidation of methyl benzenes so here you can see how to do the oxidation of methyl benzenes so what what is arch3 arch3 ar is what aromatic ring okay so this is a tolvin okay so name is tolvin so what we are going to do we are going to oxidize we do we we try to do the oxidation of this methyl group okay so we are going to oxidize this uh, methyl benzene okay so when you treat this methyl benzene with the chlorine okay that is cl2 in the presence of heat okay in the presence of heat we get what we get ch2 cl okay we get ch cl2 we get what ch cl2 so one of the hydrogen one of the hydrogen is replaced two of the hydrogens are replaced by what they are replaced by the cl2 because two chlorine atoms are there so two hydrogens are replaced by two cl atoms now this further undergoes hydrolysis okay it goes under hydrolysis and it forms what it forms cho it forms aldehydic group okay that is this it forms what aldehydic group fine so ar ch3 so chlorine okay when you heat it you get ar ch cl2 so which is a intermediate product when you do a uh, hydrolysis that is when you treat it with water you get your aldehyde so this is we are going we are doing hydrolysis we are doing hydrolysis or we are doing oxidation of methyl benzene one more method the same uh, tolvin if you treat it with potassium dichromate okay potassium uh, not potassium dichromate it is chromate okay it is chromate uh, in the presence of acetic anhydride you get what ar ch o c ch3 which is a intermediate product this you further treat it with water to give you a aldehyde to give you a aldehyde okay next is so based on this we saw some example we have taken para nitrotolvin we have taken para bromotolvin when you treat it with cl2 in the presence of heat and light it forms br ch cl3 okay this is replaced by ch cl3 2 and this on further treatment with uh, calcium carbonate and in water you get aldehyde group this ch cl2 is converted into cho then next is when you take para nitrotolvin okay that is para nitrotolvin when you treat it with cao uh, that is CrO3 in the presence of acetic anhydride, you get your intermediate product. Further treated with acid in the presence of water, that is acid hydrolysis, it gives you nitrobenzaldehyde. Para nitrobenzaldehyde is the product. Okay, so this is the second type of oxidation wherein we are doing the oxidation of methyl benzenes. Okay, we are going to do the oxidation of methyl benzenes. So this was our second preparation. The next preparation is reduction of acid chlorides. Okay, next is what? The reduction of acid chlorides. How do we do the acid chlorides? R, C, double bond, O, C, L. Okay, you have a, a chloride group which is converted to a okay carbonyl group. So, this is an acid chloride. This is the functional group of acid chloride. So, acid chloride or a, uh, you can take either R can be an alkyl group or it can be a aryl group okay it can be alkyl group or aryl group if you treat it with strong reducing agent like lithium aluminum hydride okay in the presence of lithium aluminum hydride you get what aldehyde okay you get a, a alkyl uh, derivative of aldehyde or you can get a, a aromatic okay way of aldehyde so this is the product which you will get so we are doing what we are doing reduction reduction means we are going to use strong oxidizing or uh, reducing agent. So, which is a strong reducing agent? Lithium aluminum hydride. Okay. So, this is a strong reducing agent. So, based on this, we will solve some uh, uh, example. So, I have taken para nitrobenzoyl chloride. So, para nitrobenzoyl chloride, if you treat it with uh, lithium aluminum hydride, what is happening? COCl will be converted to CHO. Okay. You, uh, what is happening? Reduction means what? Removal of oxygen. So, removal of oxygen. Okay, 
so it undergoes a reduction reaction. Next, we are going to see the preparation of uh, ketones. Okay, next we are going to see the preparation of ketones. So, what is the preparation of ketones? Okay, we are going to do dehydrohalogenation. Yes, can can anyone tell me what is dehydrohalogenation? Komal and Priyanka, can you tell me what is dehydrohalogenation? They have given dehydrogenation. Okay, I am asking about what is dehydrohalogenation. What is dehydrohalogenation? Yes. Um, remove hydrogen. Dehydrohalogenation. Uh, hydrogen halide. Is hydrogen group? Yes. Removal of hydrogen. Uh, removal of hydrogen is hydrogenation. Okay. Dehydrogenation is removal of hydrogen. When you remove hydrogen, okay, it is giving rise to dehydrogenation. I have asked dehydrohalogenation. Dehydro. Okay. D means removal. Removal of hydrogen and one halogen group. So that is, okay, HX is removed. One hydrogen halide is removed. So Priyanka has answered it right. Okay. So uh, Komal, what you have answered is for dehydrogenation. Okay, dehydrogenation, D, D means removal. Okay, D, D means removal. Hydrogenation is hydrogen. So we are removing what? We are removing hydrogen. What is hydrogenation? Only hydrogenation is what? Addition of hydrogen. Okay. Addition of hydrogen is uh, your hydrogenation. Okay. So now we are going to see what preparation of ketones that is by dehydrogenation of secondary alcohol. What is secondary alcohol? OH group is attached to what is secondary alcohol? Yes, is it secondary alcohol? Yes, is it secondary alcohol? Yes or no? Is it secondary alcohol? Is this carbon a secondary? Yes. Okay, so this is a secondary alcohol. Primary means what? R C H two O H. Okay, so this is primary alcohol. Okay, so this uh, this is primary. Now, what is tertiary? Is it a tertiary carbon? Yes, this is a tertiary carbon. So, what we are doing here? We are doing dehydrogenation of secondary alcohol. So, we have taken a secondary alcohol. Okay, R, C, H. Okay, R, C, H, O. Okay, R and O, H. So, you can see there are two uh, alkyl or uh, aryl groups. So, you treat it with copper in the presence of 573 Kelvin. What you obtain is your ketone. So, we obtain what? Ketone. Okay. So, this is ketone with the removal of hydrogen. So, these two hydrogens are removed. Okay. And you get a ketone. So, this is your what? This is your dehydrogenation. We are removing the hydrogen. We are removing the hydrogen. So, it is called as what? Dehydrogenation. Okay. Now, so we have removed the hydrogenation. Hydrogen. Example. So, this is a compound that is menthol. Okay. Menthol, when you treat it with potassium dichromate in the presence of acid like HKSO4, you obtain what? Your water molecule is removed. Okay. And you get a ketone group. Okay. We get a methone group. Okay. Methone. Menth methone. Methone group. So, this is the... Uh, your uh, first preparation of keto. Next is hydration of alkynes. Now, can you tell me, anyone tell me, what is hydration? 
Yes, what is hydration? Hydration. Yes, what is hydration? I have asked you what is hydration? What do you mean by hydration? Yes. Right. Good, Priyanka. So, hydration is what? Addition of water. Okay, addition of water is hydration. So, okay, addition of water. So, so addition of water is your hydration okay so alkynes means what alkynes means triple bond okay alkynes means you are having a triple bond so this is the alkyne group so what we are doing we are adding the hydrogen that is we are adding the water okay uh, so we are adding water molecules so what is happening it will follow the markovnikov rule so your uh, oh negative part will be added to the carbon having less number of hydrogen atom and the uh, hydrogen will be added to the carbon having more number of hydrogen atoms so like this and it undergoes a tautomerism and it forms a ketone. Okay. So it get, uh, so you get a so this is a hydration reaction. So wherein you can form your you can prepare your ketones. Okay, you can form your ketones. Next is ozonolysis. What do you mean by ozonolysis? Addition of what is ozonolysis? Addition of ozone molecule. Okay, addition of ozone molecule is called as ozonolysis. Okay, ozonolysis. So, we are adding the uh, ozone, uh, this ozone. So, what uh, we have taken an alkene. Okay, we have taken an alkene. We are treating it with ozone molecule. Okay, it is go undergoing in the presence of water and zinc. Okay, so what you are obtaining? You are obtaining a ketone. So, by this also method, you can prepare your ketone. Okay, so by ozone analysis of alkene. Next is from Grignard reagent. What do you mean by Grignard reagent? What are Grignard reagent? What are called to be Grignard reagent? Yes, what are Grignard reagent? Are organometallic compound called as Grignard reagent? Yes, RMGX. Okay, so they are called as what? They are called as Grignard reagent. Okay, that is organometallic compounds. What you have to tell, they are called as what? They are called as organometallic compound, RMGX. Okay, there is an organic group, one metal is associated. So, it is called as organometallic compound. So, for second preparation, we are going to treat it with or, uh, Grignard reagent. Okay, we are going to take Grignard reagent and one cyano group. Okay, cyanide. Okay, so it undergoes a hydrolysis and to give you what? It gives you ketone. Okay, so this is another reaction wherein you can obtain your ketone. Next is from acid chloride. Next is from what? Acid chlorides. So when you treat your acid chlorides with R2CD, okay, that is a cadmium, you get your ketone. So this is one more reaction wherein you can obtain your ketone. Okay, so remember the naming uh, this, okay. Next is physical properties. Okay, what are the physical properties of aldehyde and ketones? So the polar uh, carbonyl group, the polar carbonyl group makes the aldehyde and ketone polar compound. What is polar carbonyl group now? Yes, what do you mean by polar carbonyl group? C double bond O. So between the oxygen and carbon, which is highly electronegative? Between carbon and oxygen, which is highly electronegative? Yes, between carbon and oxygen, which is highly electronegative. What do you mean by polar compounds? Yes, oxygen is highly electronegative. So, what will happen as oxygen is highly electronegative? There will be partial negative charge developed on oxygen and partial positive charge developed on carbon. So, as a result, what will happen? These compounds are said to be polar, okay, because there are uh, development of charges okay so they are called as polar compounds so because there is a presence of polar carbonyl group it makes this aldehyde and ketones they uh, as polar compounds so the they have higher boiling point okay they have higher boiling point 
of uh, non polar compounds or comparable molecular weight okay so polar compounds they have higher boiling point then the lower aldehyde and ketones they are soluble in water so the lower the lower aldehyde and ketones they are soluble in water and because of what because of the hydrogen bonding which is present between the solute and the solvent molecule so because why the lower aldehyde and ketones are uh, soluble because of the hydrogen bonding which is present between the solute and the solvent molecule okay so aldehyde and ketones they are also soluble in organic solvents organic solvents also these aldehyde and ketones are soluble next some of the very important name reactions which we are going to study so rose rosenmund reduction the, what is this reaction it is called as rosenmund uh, reduction so what we are doing reduction means what again reduction means addition of hydrogen and removal of oxygen okay Hydri addition of hydrogen and removal of oxygen is called as reduction so acyl chlorides when they are hydrogenated over catalyst so acyl chloride so this is a acyl chloride okay this is example of acyl chloride so this can be i can write the generalized okay so r c double bond o c l so this is a acyl chloride okay so this is a acyl chloride r c double bond o cl okay this is a acyl chloride so acyl chlorides when they are hydrogenated that is when you are adding hydrogen molecule that is h2 over any catalyst or you can take palladium on barium sulfate so you can take uh, your hydrogenating agent like uh, hydrogen uh, in the presence of nickel platinum okay uh so uh, this uh, hydrogenating catalyst or uh, you can take palladium palladium on barium sulfate and it obtains what it obtains your aldehyde okay it obtains your aldehyde so from your benzoyl chloride you obtain your benzaldehyde so this is a uh, rosenmeld reduction what we are doing we are doing a reduction we are removing our uh, oxygen and we are uh, adding our hydrogen so this is rosenmeld reduction okay so we are doing a catalyst we are doing a hydrogenating catalyst uh, okay and this uh, will yield you aldehydes next is stiffen reaction next is what stiffens reaction so stiffens reaction the nitriles they are reduced to corresponding imines okay imines with stannous chloride so which is the reagent taken it is stannous chloride in the presence of hydrochloric acid that is hcl and which will uh, on hydrolysis that is when you are treating it with water it will give you corresponding aldehyde so nitriles is what rcn is nitriles so when you treat the nitriles with stannous chloride that is sncl2 in the presence of hcl it yields you what it yields you aldehyde corresponding aldehyde is obtained so this is the another name reaction okay uh, next is ethard reaction next is ethard reaction so what is ethard reaction on treating tolvin with chromyl chloride okay chromyl chloride is what cro2 cl2 the methyl group is oxidized to chromium complex so we have taken aldehyde this uh, that is a uh, uh, tolvin we have taken tolvin this tolvin is treated with chromyl chloride test after you treat it with chromyl chloride test the methyl group okay this methyl group that is ch3 group it is oxidized to a chromium complex okay the methyl group it is oxidized to chromium complex so this chromium complex which is obtained which is further hydrolysis okay it is undergoing acid hydrolysis to give you corresponding benzaldehyde okay it it yields you what it yields you corresponding aldehyde so this is one more ethard reduction so we have seen rosenmund reduction stiffen reaction and ethard reaction okay so these are some of the very important name reaction next is clemmensen reduction next is what clemmensen reduction so the carbonyl group of aldehyde and ketone so what we are doing in clemmensen reduction the aldehyde group is present which is present in the aldehyde uh, that is uh, which is present in the uh, uh, the carbonyl group which is present in the aldehyde and ketones okay it is reduced to ch2 group okay 
so your aldehyde group is uh, converted to ch2 group okay which one treatment with zinc amalgam okay with zinc amalgam in the presence of hcl will induce ch2 so when you treat your carbonyl ca group of aldehyde or ketone okay it is reduced to ch2 group how it is reduced by treating it with zinc hcl that is zinc uh, amalgam okay and uh, that is uh, in the presence of hydrochloric acid you obtain what you obtain uh, alkene you obtain alkene so alkenes plus water is obtained so here we are reducing our ketone to alkene next is wolf kishner reduction okay wolf kishner reduction we have taken the ketone so ketone it is treated with sodium or potassium hydroxide okay and hydrazine nh2 nh2 is hydrazine okay and this is heated that is in the uh, with the solvent like uh, ethylene glycol okay in the presence in the solvent like ethylene glycol it yields alkenes so this is one more reduction reaction i hope this name reactions are clear yes so these name reactions are very important which you need to remember okay so name reaction always in every chapter okay name reactions are very important is it clear uh, whatever has been taught till now is it clear Yes, is it clear? Whatever has been taught till here. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I think for today this much is enough. If you want to ask any doubts regarding uh, whatever has been taught till now, okay, from aldehyde ketones, uh, their physical properties, uh, then important name reaction, then some of the preparations of uh, aldehyde ketones. So, if you need to ask anything, you can ask me. Okay. So the remaining part. So we have completed some of the very important name reactions. Okay, that is uh, we have uh, completed about the Rosamond. Okay, Rosamond uh, reduction. So we have studied about Rose Rosamond uh, reduction. Then we have studied about Stiffen reaction. Then Ethard reaction, Clemenson reduction. Then Wolf Kishner reduction. So in the next class we will complete this aldol condensation, Kalinzaro reaction. Okay, then we'll see about the acidity of aldehydes and ketone, uses of aldehydes, uses of ketones. Then we are going to study about carboxylic acid. I hope this much is clear. Yes. Okay then. So uh, I shall end the session here. Okay. If there are no doubts, so I shall end the session here. So we'll meet in the next class. Okay. So I hope today's session is clear. So I'll stop the session here. Thank you. Have a nice day.